drink your water. Hello everyone. Welcome to a new vlog. If you can hear some noise in the background, it's either the birds chirping right outside the window because the window is open, the weather is nice, or it's Andrew doing the shits in the other room. The other room being the kitchen, obviously. As you will have seen, we've had a fairly chill morning and then we went for a long walk to Greenwich and back. I am reading finally because i pre-ordered this book when it came out in september last year i believe the evening and the morning back and followed this is a historical fiction book uh set in the nine nine hundreds so it spans about 10 years and so far i'm just 100 pages in we've sort of explored three different storylines they all stem from the same point which is the invasion by the vikings in Combe. After the vikings invade this coastal town then there is this issue of the village being completely destroyed and obliterated in terms of economy. A lot of people obviously lose their lives and a lot of people don't know how to do how to survive basically so the livelihood of many families is just completely taken away because having their tools or resources burnt by the vikings or destroyed by the vikings obviously removes a source of income for families. The other storyline that we explore is sort of the owners of the land on which Combe lies and obviously they are wealthier and they have not been personally attacked by the vikings so they haven't had to for any personal loss but at the same time be, being the owners of the land it means that they get rent on the land and if the people living on the land are not able to sort of um, pay rent or um, use the land for agricultural purposes or whatever it is that it is they're living um, they are unable to survive and hence become a sort of profit for the landowners. And then the other storyline we see is the one that sort of stems from the landowners and how they decide to solve the issue. And the way they decide to solve the issue is to get in touch with people in France, in Normandy, uh, because apparently a specific harbour in Normandy is where the Vikings sort of stop and refill the ships and don't attack the French people, but then move and go on the other side of the channel and attack British ta English towns. We are introduced to two characters that I think are going to be quite important. One is Edgar and Edgar is the person who raised the alarm in the little town of Combe uh, when the Vikings arrived and he's eight, 17, 18, 18 I believe um, and his father was killed by the Vikings. By the way I'm not spoiling much, this all happens within the first 20 pages. The other key character that we see so far is Ragna and she is a French uh, daughter of the Count. The Count I think is the is the appropriate name of the little town in France where Viking ships stop to re restock and refill. Uh, these two characters have not met, they have interacted with common characters but at the same time I do feel like they're both going to be play a key part in the story. I'm enjoying it. The story is really captivating. Last night, I started this yesterday and I'm on page 100. I started it last night and I just sort of I had to force myself to put it away because I had to go to bed. I knew I had to go to bed even though I really didn't want to put it away. So I'm gonna go read now because I, I was mentioning to Andrew as we were walking. I'm like, I can't wait to go home and read a little bit more. So that's what I'm gonna do. Morning everyone, it's Sunday and I'm just about to go on a quick walk before it starts raining because the sky is incredibly grey. I woke up before 7 o'clock so it gave me those few hours of, you know, sunrise, on the sofa, with the dog, chilling and reading which was really nice. I'm now at page 100 and 159 so not that far into the book but as you can see it's making some progress and I think by now I can sort of tell 
who the main characters are going to be in the story. So two of them, I got them right. One is Edgar, so the 18 year old young boy from Combe who gave the alarm to the, to the town when the Vikings approached the town and managed to save a big chunk of the population by raising the alarm but at the same time his father was killed by the Vikings protecting the little workshop that they had because they were a boat building, ship building family. Uh, so they had to relocate, relocate to this other place which is called Drangs Ferry which is a sort of village slash town about two days walk away from Combe and um, they were given a farm, a really um, in, in really bad condition, no livestock with the exception of one pig, uh, but it was him, it's him, his two brothers who are both older than he is and his mother who's now a widow. Then the other main character is Ragna, Ragnild, the full name, she's a noble woman from uh, Normandy and then we have Aldred, a monk from Shiring, and he was at Ragnild's father's um, place a few months before the storyline that I'm currently reading takes place. Without giving much of the story away, uh, Aldred then returns to England and um, upon his journey to his com convent, did they live in a convent? To his residence, <laughs> he stops at Drangs Ferry, which is where uh, Edgar's storyline takes place. And he sort of guesses that something not quite right is going on over there. So my guess at this point in the story is that Aldred is going to find a way to stay in Drangs Ferry or return to Drangs Ferry after he leaves in order to investigate what's happening. There is a lot of lack of respect for the Christian prin principles that were obviously quite dominant in England at that time. There is also something quite dodgy going on with a metal workshop. I don't know how important that's going to be in the story, but Aldred witnesses something going on. We don't really understand what it is. Something has to do with jewellery making or maybe um, metal work that is not quite right. But we, we don't know enough just yet. We just sense that there is a sense of unease between a couple of people that sort of spot him accidentally entering this workshop. So uh, Aldra is definitely a really interesting character and I definitely underestimated his importance in the story. Also from the chapters where he encounters Ragnar we know that he is probably um, gay and the reason why he joins the church is probably to avoid temptation and be pure and dedicate his life to God. I do wonder whether this storyline is going to play some sort of role in the book further along. I, I am really glad I picked it up because even though it's a brick of a book, it really has given me that sense of I want to go home and read, which I think is crucial to any reader's life. The other fun thing is that um, my my dad is another Ken Follett fan. The other day I mentioned to him that I finally started reading it because he knew that I had pre-ordered it and every now and again he asked me, oh so is it a good book? Is it a good book? And I'm like, I'm, I'm sorry, I haven't picked it up just yet. And um, so the other day I told him, oh dad, I, I started reading this. And the very same day apparently he downloaded the ebook and he's like, oh yeah, I, I got it too. <laughs> So I started on Friday night and he started on Saturday morning and then he's like me, he sort of reads a little bit in the day but he's got like proper time slots in which he likes to read, one being in the morning quite early and the other one being just before going to bed. So this morning I, I was on Skype with him and I'm like, oh, did, did you read any more of the book? He's like, yeah, yesterday before going to bed, couldn't put it down, I had 20 pages to go until the end of the chapter and I had to finish it. <laughs> so um, yeah, like father, like daughter on this one. <laughs> The other thing that I wanted to mention is that this obviously takes place at Drangs Ferry. Now I, the first time I read Pills of the Earth, I think I was 13 I want to say. It's one thing that I remember though is obviously the main, the main character being Tom the Builder and I do feel like considering how Edgar's story is progressing, I have a feeling that Edgar and Tom might be related. Also because the story takes place at Drangs Ferry, which is also featured in Pillars of the Earth, if I'm not wrong, 
and we do get at the very beginning some fleeting mentions of uh, Leper Island, the church, the fact that the buildings are mostly built out of wood and obviously if you've read Pillars of the Earth you realise how important it is the switch from wood to stone in terms of construction and obviously much more that has to do with the cathedral and everything like that but that's a, that's a whole different story for a whole different book but I do feel like there are a lot of similarities both in physical appearance and mentality and sort of resolve between Edgar and Tom from Pillars of the Earth. It's kind of getting worse and worse as I talk so I'll, uh, I'll catch up with you later but so far so good can't wait to get stuck into this again. here something in the background is the rugby match between London and Bristol I think um, anyway we're, we're not focusing on that all we're focusing on is something that we picked up on our way on, on our walk this morning so we walked past this place we had seen it a couple of times it's opened it, it's this sort of cafe ice cream place that opened during the second lockdown just before summer break, um, but we never went there. Uh, but we walked past and I spotted a cheesecake in the window. Obviously the place is closed, it only does take away, but basically the way it works, they have this little window in the in the actual shop and you, you, you place your order and then you pay from the outside with your card by tapping it on, on the window. Um, and then from the same tiny little hatch, they pass you whatever you ordered. So we got two cheesecakes and Andrew got a cappuccino. Cappuccino was just all right. Uh, but apparently the cheesecake is really nice according to this one. You've gone all blurry, <laughs> probably for the best. So this is a cheesecake and I've gone for vanilla and blackcurrant, I believe it is. I can't wait to dig in. Taking a little bit of break from reading. I've read a few more pages, but still have obviously a long way to go. Have a nice cup of white tea. Good morning, everyone. It's now Tuesday. Um, yesterday, I didn't have a chance to vlog just because it was one of those mental days where it's task after task after task and it comes to 9 p.m. and you're still sort of trying to wrap up the day. But I did read a little bit just before going to bed. I literally fell asleep. I had a couple of moments, you know, when you have a really heavy book and you're trying to read and it sort of keeps falling on your nose. Right now we're currently following the journey that Ragnar is taking from France to England. And yesterday evening I wanted to keep on reading, but um, they were still at sea and the book was falling on my face. So I, I'm sure she's going to be fine, but the journey at sea is quite unique for somebody who's spent most of her life on normal floor she's not really traveled that much and it's the first time she actually leaves France as far as I know unless she went to one of the neighboring countries by road so so it'll be interesting to see whether the storyline that Ragnar is currently embedded in is going to develop into something romantic or into something out of convenience because the last time we saw her together with the character that she's um she's going to see in England uh, they had this romantic relationship going on, but I do wonder whether this romantic relationship is actually true or if it's something that is just there so that it can pursue the, the English interests with France in terms of trying to get that part of France to block um, Viking ships going on the other side of the channel. So that, that'll be quite interesting to discover. I do feel like it cannot be that much of a romance it would be a bit too early on in the book i think and also there's quite a big age gap between ragnar who's 20 and the other character who's 40 so i do wonder whether something might happen to him i quite like him as a character but um that being said it's very early on in the book but what i'm going to do now i still have about an hour and a half before i have to start work so i'm going to be reading a little bit um andrew's in the other room teaching and I think right now he's taking a break but obviously just like everything he does these days it's either talking to children online or doing exercise in the living room uh, which is very noisy and very annoying 
So, so I'm just going to read in the bedroom, which is fine. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to spring. Well, sort of. Uh, it's the 1st of March, which means in theory, sp spring has started. Um, today, uh, today and tomorrow I'm off work because I had one of my ridiculous seven days week last week. And the original plan since today was supposed to be the first day of spring and it was supposed to be sunny and beautiful and warmer, um, I wanted to walk to Hampstead. Um, but it turns out it's actually quite grey and foggy, so if the weather holds, I'm going to brave it and go out with the fog in the grey sky. Um, but if the weather forecast suggests that there's going to be even a slight chance of rain, I think I might just stay home because Hampstead is quite a long way away and if I get caught in the rain on the way there or on the way back it's going to be horrible. <laughs> a little update on what's been going on. I am still I'm still reading um, The Evening and the Morning by Ken Follett. I'm about nearly a third of the way through. Nearly 300 pages in. Yeah, 250. Um, I haven't had much reading over the past week just because it was really busy um, but I, I, I did do quite a lot of reading in bed before going to sleep. So last night, I just before falling asleep, I started reading chapter 12 and in chapter 12 we see this weird development in the personal story of Edgar. Uh, he witnesses a very traumatic event and I think that um, because of his past and because of what he witnessed during the Viking attack sort of spurs um, this immediate anger and need for sense of justice in him. So I think that that's going to be quite a big plot twist, not because of what he feels, but what might happen because this sort of sense of justice is great and justified, but at the same time is um, sort of towards this really important person in the village. Um, I'm not going to give much away in terms of why he feels this way or uh, what's happened but it's a, it was a very traumatic scene to read in chapter 11 and it is completely understandable Edgar's reaction but also I do completely understand the other characters that are sort of suggesting to him to back off and not escalate this to an actual trial. I'm going to read more today, uh, depending on the weather I might read a lot or not that much We'll see how that goes. But before I end this clip and take Poppy on a walk because she's desperate to go and it's late, <laughs> it's 10 o'clock in the morning and she still needs to go for a wee. Um, one final update, I didn't catch this on camera but a few, over a week ago I think, I got my passport. So now I have officially two passports. I've got my Italian passport which I've had since birth and my British passport which makes me really proud. I'm also really impressed with how quick the whole process was to request a passport. My entire process was done within a week so so happy. So yeah can't wait to use it. Obviously I'm not going to show you inside but um, it is different from my Italian one because it's got a mm, plastic page which is quite nice. My picture is, just like every single picture in a passport, very terrifying, so you will definitely not be seeing that, but... Go my passport! Hello! It's the next day, but I'm still wearing the same clothes. You know why? Because I haven't done absolutely anything yesterday, so... That's fine. Currently the weather is quite cold, but it's supposed to get a little bit warmer, a little bit sunnier, within the next couple of hours. So I'm thinking, since otherwise I don't really have a chance to do it, I might go to Hampstead regardless. And if the weather is shit, I'm gonna wrap myself up with my scarf and it's okay. And if it's not shit, then I can enjoy um, a nice few hours just walking around the forest bit. And that sounds about right. I, I was thinking of just not going, but at the same time, I know that if I don't enjoy a little bit of time outside this flat and outside this area, on days like Mondays and Tuesdays, which are the only days that I feel comfortable enough to go a little bit further out from my area because not that many people are around because obviously they're working, then I know I don't do it because Saturdays and Sundays are way too frightening for me at this stage and really we shouldn't be going outside um, 
mingling in any way. So I'm braving the fog and I'm braving the five degrees weather and I'm going to go and it's going to be fine. This is going to be shaky because I don't have a tripod and I'm walking downhill at the same time but I am in Hampstead and I'm whispering almost just because it's so quiet over here it's so nice the road to get in was quite busy there was a couple coming and I immediately <laughs> felt really self-conscious and stopped filming oh, can you see me? yeah but I am, as I said, I'm in the heat I'm going to keep walking, very empty, very safe. The road was quite busy in terms of cars, but once you're in, you're safe. morning it's saturday or as i want to rename this day indulgence day these are slices of brioche bread with nutella on it and that's a hot cup of tea a little bit of oat milk in it and i can't wait to dig in to be honest it was supposed to be just two pieces but then i burnt another one and i mean we don't like waste do we <laughs> if you're thinking if it's just the camera washing my face out and making me look really white you'd be wrong I am actually incredibly pale these days. I am still reading the evening and the morning back and forth. It. And last night, actually, I went to bed quite late. It was almost one o'clock when I realized I really had to stop reading. And in fact, I stopped like in the middle of a chapter because the book kept falling on my chest. And um, so we have reached an interesting point in the story in terms of what's happening within the word itself. Um, not much has happened. Um, there haven't been any more Viking invasions worth of notice and there was this sort of controversy going on with the Welsh at the border uh, but they didn't sort of make it into uh, into England or better they made it into England and then retreated um, and I don't think that's going to be a major part of the plot at this stage. We are still following the three main characters that we identi identified early in the story. So we have Edgar, we have Aldred, and we have Ragnar. Ragnar is the one who's taken most of the narration into her hands over the past few chapters, just because she um, she got married to the Englishman. Throughout the chapters, we see that obviously there is love between these two characters, or at least physical attraction, even though there is a big age gap. We discovered just in the chapter that I'm currently reading actually, or maybe not the previous chapter, he's hiding something quite big from Ragnar. So the wedding has happened and is valid but is based on a lie. A lie that has been perpetrated by Ragnar's husband but also members of um, his family and as well as people higher up in society who sort of made the deal with Ragnar's father in France. So I, I could see sort of something like that coming because I couldn't really explain this instant connection and resolution so early on in the book. So it's quite interesting to see that there is a point of clash between these characters. So yeah, I'll keep on reading. I'm currently a hundred, no, sorry, 315 pages in. Um, as I said, last night I started reading, but then the, the book kept falling on my face and I really had to go to bed. 
but I'm, I'm hoping to read some more today. I'm not giving myself um, a specific task, but I, I really can't wait to dig into this book a little bit more. I also just want to add, if you live in England right now, in London to be specific, because I can't talk about the rest of England, but how fucking cold is it? Three degrees? What the hell? It's supposed to be spring. Why is it so cold? We came back from a walk about half an hour, 40 minutes ago. My hands are still cold. I'm really considering making myself a cup of tea. We, we, we're that, that deep into winter still. Hello everyone, welcome to Sunday. And it's not just any Sunday, it's that one's birthday today. So we've been celebrating very low key because we're still in lockdown so we we really didn't do that much i picked up some a selection of oh that's a lot of light i picked up a selection of little cakes and pastries so we've had some of those after a very brief lunch and i'm treating him to a delivery dinner because that's the <laughs> that's the kind of stuff we can do lockdown <laughs> but but that that aside, uh, the sun is actually shining right now, so I thought I'd pick up the camera and show my face with a little bit of sunshine on it. And I am still reading, oh, I got a sore neck. I am so oh hello. Little guest. I'm still reading the evening and the morning, but I can't follow it. I'm gonna put it down because it really hurts. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna do a little bit more reading. In terms of progress from since yesterday, I read a little bit more in bed, uh, but a little bit more literally means a little bit more as in five pages because then again I was falling asleep with a book on my nose and this is a heavy book. <laughs> so that was that. Uh, I'll read a little bit more. The The sun is really inspiring me. I wish I had a nice like sparkly soft drink, but I do have um, some alcohol free beer in the, in the fridge so I might have a glass of that actually. But yeah, that's the plan for the afternoon. Um, a friend of mine who moved about five minutes away from where we currently live has borrowed some duvets and blankets and all that um, for the past couple of weeks because her stuff hadn't arrived yet in the new place. And I think today she was washing them and bringing them over. So I might see her through, <laughs> through the glass. <laughs> um, so that'd be nice. I mean, I can make her maybe a cup of tea in a single use cap and she can drink it outside as I'm standing inside and we are on the phone. Um, again, that's the kind of life that we lead now, isn't it? But anyway, I'll read some more. I'll update you. Let's enjoy the sun. everyone welcome to Tuesday it's the 9th of March 2021 and today fun fact um, marks precisely one year since the last time I was sitting in a theater watching a theater show so that's a bit sad but hey ho it's a sunny day Poppy and I went on a really long walk and um, key reason for the walk was sourcing some food because we ran out of cereal and we've run out of porridge and we've run out of milk basically the fridge is empty and uh, there is nothing we can eat so treating myself to hot chocolate and this bad boy is a cinnamon bun um we live 
as you probably know, we currently live quite close to Nanhead and there is this beautiful road called the Evelina Road. It has a lot of really nice independent shops that range from arts and crafts to a beautiful butchers that every time I walk past I'm like, I don't even like meat that much but you know, I could eat that. <laughs> um, and there is this nice place called Good, Good, Good Cup? Good Cup. That's it. And it was the first time trying it. I always walked past and sort of never went in. Um, I was a little bit put off by the fact that they, I think they sell skateboards as well. Um, and obviously, um, I, I think I care too much about my life um, to, to even try a skate because I know I wouldn't be able to. But anyway, went in, really nice, dog friendly. Obviously, you, you have to do just take away these days. So it was quite nice. But they have three different types of hot chocolate. So they have the milk hot chocolate, the 50-50 hot chocolate, and then the one I went for, which is the 85% dark chocolate. And that was wonderful because it's not too sweet, but it also gives you a little bit of the sweetness of the hot chocolate and they don't put sugar unless you ask them to. So top marks for me. Um, so I'm going to eat that. But in the meantime, I'm also doing some admin because I start work at half 12 which is really convenient. It still gives me another couple of hours to sort of sort out some stuff. I need to scan quite a lot of documents because as you might know, we are currently in the process of buying a flat. And that requires a lot of talks with, the, well, the bank side of things is all sorted. The mortgage is sorted. We've paid for the mortgage fee. It's fine. So mortgage side of things is fine. But now we have to sort out stuff with the solicitor side of things. In terms of reading, Oh, last night was another interesting night because I, I fell asleep again holding this book and sort of forcing myself to go to sleep when it started falling on my head quite too often. I'm now at chapter 19 and I was typing my dad just this morning and he's like, oh, I'm at chapter 17. And my dad is a notoriously slow reader, but it's quite funny how we've, we've got this sort of buddy read going on, which is quite nice. And we, we talked about bits of the book, which shocked us both because there are some scenes that are quite, not that many, but there are a couple of scenes that are quite gruesome and quite brutal, especially if you read them as somebody that has a high level of empathy which I think is my case so that was that was fun uh, but I can't wait like, a part of me doesn't want to finish it and the other part of me if I had a full day in which I wasn't doing anything and I mean nothing not even going out for a walk I'd be glued to this book and finish it um, but as I said it's quite nice to read a can follow book without sort of rushing through it because most of the time I I tend to read them quite fast and then I you know after a week of being immersed in this world I I have to say goodbye to all the characters and all the stuff that happens in it whereas I'm taking my time and it's quite nice because I I don't want to leave Drenks Ferry and I don't want to leave Shiring Shire Shire I'll catch you later I'll uh, I'll do I think I'll prioritize admin this morning because I want to get this sorted before midweek because Wednesday, Thursday and Friday is going to be a bit manic in terms of work. Mm. Morning everyone, it's Saturday the 13th, I think, of March. Um, this week has been fairly quiet in terms of reading uh, just because I did most of it when I was going to bed and there is no chance I'm going to film myself reading as I sleep well as I fall asleep um, in terms of the week itself it's been a really long hard tough week work-wise so I'm quite tired and I cannot believe I actually made it to Saturday because I I was about to quit at some point not quit as in quit the week not the job I love my job I am obviously still reading the evening and the morning, like in foliage, I'm halfway through, so that's exciting. Um, I am starting, you know how I mentioned, I must have mentioned it in a previous clip, how I feel like Edgar and Tom from, well Edgar from this book and Tom from Pillars of the Earth must be related in some way. In terms of the storyline with Ragnar, the um, Norman 
her marriage is not quite going to plan but at the same time there is quite a lot of lust um, I do have to say the scenes where there is sex between Ragna and her husband used to be quite nice and hot at the beginning but now I feel like we've sort of seen it before and I don't see any interaction besides sex between those two characters which I do understand it's representative of the time like you didn't really have the same kind of relationship you have between man and woman especially when it comes to royal not royal families but wealthy families that own land and all that but still it's not particularly satisfying to just read about sex between a couple because I feel like sex can become much more hot and interesting when you see also the connection between the characters so I'm not really seeing the connection between those two characters I do wonder whether Ragna is planning on some sort of revenge plan because she's being wronged it would be nice to see a woman's revenge and I it is not new to Ken Follett's books to see a woman sort of take charge of her own destiny and, you know, take matters in it in her hands and change the course of events. I do not see how Ragna could do it at this stage, but I do wonder whether she's thinking of something like that. I do think, obviously, at this very stage in time, she does not have, she's not pregnant with her husband's son or daughter, and she does not have any children already. So I don't think she's in the right position to make a decision like I'm going to break away, I'm going to kill my husband or something like that. But there is that thought sort of at the back of my head. I'm like, she's being wronged and she's not stupid. So maybe she's thinking of something. But at the same time, she is in love with this man. So, you know, we'll see what happens. But yeah, that storyline is sort of falling a little bit flat. And then there is Aldred's storyline, the uh, priest, friar, monk churchman <laughs> his storyline really picked up because we could all tell that there was something going on in terms of you know something dodgy happening at Drinksbury and in Combe with a specific character uh, connected to the clergy who did not have the best relationship with Aldred um, but Aldred was smart enough to sort of investigate this a little bit further and try gather at least some initial evidence right now we we don't have too much evidence but we definitely know what this dodgy character is doing and how he's doing it the reason there is an in interesting line that i read the other night and edgar says it he's like i do not edgar aldred says it um and it's something on the lines of why would a man that already has so much like scam people to get more but i guess it all has to do with greed, um, greed, yeah. And obviously, it's um, it's an interesting sentence coming from somebody from within the church setting because obviously, I think greed is one of the capital sins. Thou shall not steal. That that is one of the ten. What is it? Commandments, I think. Um, as you can see, I've been kicked out of Sunday school when I was a kid, so I didn't retain much. <laughs> Uh, that being said, um, it's not raining at the moment, which will take us a win considering how cold it's been the past few days. And we might go for a walk in Nunhead and I have an idea for breakfast because we're getting our Okado delivery later today. So we don't really have that much around the house in terms of food. And I do think we should get a little treat for breakfast on a Saturday. I know you were all dying to see this, but the Okado delivery is finally here and it's before before 11 <laughs> so very happy with that we'll put this away now and have dinner i haven't read a single page but i'm really happy about food morning everyone it's sunday it's just gone seven o'clock now. Woke up quite early. Well, mostly because I was woken up by Poppy. She, <laughs> I don't know what happened, but usually she sleeps on my feet on the bed. But today in the middle of the night, she decided she wanted to sleep on the sofa. So she just left, we leave the door slightly ajar so she can go in and out as she pleases. She's very calm and very clean. So we don't really mind her being on the bed. 
Anyway, so she was sleeping on the sofa and then at half five, I don't know what happened, I could hear her. She literally sprinted from the living room to the bedroom. She jumped on the bed and started licking my face. Um, so I took it as a sign that I should start slowly waking up. I got out of bed at six and then I was like, you know what? Yesterday I didn't do any yoga even though I really wanted to. So I might as well do a gentle morning flow, which is what I did. I found just something online for like 20 minutes. And then following, by that, following that, I did a seven minute morning meditation. Last night I went to bed quite late, um, again, because I was reading the morning and the evening. It's such a good book. <laughs> it, I do have to say, maybe because I read it at a different time in my life and I was more impressed by the writing back then. I still think Pillars of the Earth is better but we'll see where it goes. I feel like there are a few cliche writing prompts, not prompts, but it, it gets a little bit cliche at some point in terms of writing style, um, like ending a sentence and then, or is it? Um, I just find nothing that disrupts the reading experience. It's probably my only criticism so far. Really nice book and the amount of research that went into it is beyond imaginable. I think he probably consulted over a hundred books, if not more. moment of appreciation for our lunch so I made some couscous and cumin chicken lime um, natural yogurt with lime is supposed to have mint we didn't have mint we'll survive and then there were supposed to be almonds but we don't have them so I put peanuts instead but this looks yummy I can't wait to dig in afternoon everyone it's a few hours later I do want to take a moment to appreciate whatever is happening with the hair situation it is now way too long to be called short but way too short to be called long but i straightened it this morning hoping that it would sort of make sense and it has fallen into this weird thing which sort of reminds me of rachel <laughs> rachel and friends in the early 2000s so it's okay, I'll take it. <laughs> Considering how the situation was this morning, I'll take it. I'm obviously still reading the evening and the morning back and forth. It. I do wonder also how the relationship between Edgar and Ragnar is going to evolve. They seem to have this sort of trust and respect for each other, which I think is quite unusual. I don't know whether it would have been likely to happen back in the day. I have my suspicions it wouldn't have. But still, it's quite nice to read about it. It's a pleasant sort of story. I've been lazing around on the sofa for the past few hours and I'm like, no, I need to get up. I need to do something. And if I don't want to do anything, at least I stop being on my phone and I start reading, being a little bit more productive. So that's the aim. Hello, it's Tuesday, it's nearly 5pm. I literally just wrapped up the work day and I came in here. <laughs> I came here around 2pm after I had lunch uh, and Poppy was on the bed, she was really happy so I brought her a blanket because it's a bit cold. I completely forgot about her, I was quite busy at work. And now I came and I found her in the exact same position I left her. So cute. Good morning everyone, welcome to Wednesday. I actually remember today today, incredible. Can't follow it. The evening and the morning. You're currently propped on it, so I'm not going to be able to show you, but 
you know, you've seen the book plenty of times. Ragnar's story is picking up a lot. You have to see this. Can you see what just happened? She saw me talking to the camera and she's like, yeah, I want attention. You brought me a Santa Claus. Okay, come here. Yeah, I know. I know. Do you want to play? Go get it. <laughs> I always find it hilarious when she runs. So yeah, I was, as I was saying, uh, Ragnar's story is picking up quite a lot. She's showing that she is a very strong woman and she's got great leadership skills. She has made some enemies on the way, uh, some powerful ones and some less powerful ones, but she's also made some friends, especially Aldred, the, the friar, the monk, I always get it wrong, uh, and Edgar. I also do wonder whether there's going to be a romance with Edgar, because I, I mentioned that there could potentially be something going on, because obviously they're both attracted to each other, even though not in the, you know, the... What'd you bring now? <laughs> Are you just going to keep bringing me toys? You're such a jealous little poop. She's not interested. She doesn't want to play. She just wants me to give her attention. So Edgar and Ragnar, they clearly have some interest in each other, but they haven't really done anything just yet. I feel like it might become um, a love story on the way. Also because I do have the feeling, and this is completely like purely based on speculation, that Ragnar's husband is going to die. And with him dying, then that would mean that she will lose all her sort of noble rights because Edgar, uh, sorry, um, Ragnar's husband already has a previous wife and a child with her who is now 17 I would say. Um, so that would mean that probably he could become the rightful owner of the Eldorman, I think that's called. But anyway, I've been falling asleep regularly with this book on my nose, uh, which is great because it's definitely what I wanted but I also do feel a little bit of pressure because I do have book club in two weeks and I haven't even started a book for book club which is I'm looking at it right now is Underland by Robert McFarlane and it's quite a chunky book I do wonder whether I'm actually going to be a slow reader with that one but I've been meaning to read it for a really long time and I was so excited when we actually picked that so hopefully it's going to be another good read but I do know that after reading a Ken Follett book, I always need one or two days in which I don't read anything just because I'm still sort of in the word. It's a few hours later, I'm actually on my lunch break, which I'm supposed to take a lunch break at half 12 and it's now five to one uh, just because I, I kept doing some, I don't know if you can see something over there, but um, there was a urgent YouTube edit that needed to be done. So I've sorted that while I eat this and drink a lot of water, I'm going to be watching Jen Campbell's latest video, which came out, wow, that's a really unflattering picture. Sorry, Jen. <laughs> Comment section down below as to how many books you think I hauled. We are in the process. <sighs> Morning everyone. Welcome to Friday. Yesterday was quite a day. And if I look like a disheveled librarian who hasn't slept in ages, uh, that's because probably my alter ego was a librarian, but I have definitely not slept in a very long time. I... Do not worry, everything's fine, but I did spend a chunk of the night in hospital. I am fine, as I said, and everything will become clear in the next vlog, I believe. That being said, after this unnecessary nighttime scare, um, yeah, today I'm feeling a little bit ugh, run down. I'm currently working, but I'm on a tea break, which actually turned out to be a Yakult break. Part of me wanted to read. I'm still probably at the same point. I mean, I've read one page yesterday before I had to sort of go. Uh, and I definitely didn't bring this with me. I need to finish this book this week because next vlog is going to be all about Underland, I believe. Uh, but for this one, I'm gonna wrap it up tomorrow or Sunday. 
either way this week because can't go on for much longer i don't even know how long i've been reading this book for it's really nice though to take time but anyway i'll catch you later and for now i'll just go grab a blanket and go back to work <laughs> it's a few hours later and it's lunchtime this one is really happy because she just had some yogurt um but this is my lunch i've ran out of ideas people i've ran out of ideas so i'm having granola and yogurt for lunch as well it's fine <laughs> Good morning everyone, it's Sunday. I'm whispering because Andrew's in the other room asleep, as one should be on Sunday morning. I am awake, just had a little quick Skype chat with my dad and we talked a little bit about Can I this book. Um, I'm way ahead of him, he's about maybe 200 pages behind. Um, I think I'm definitely going to finish this book today because I don't have that much left. I think I have about 200 pages left to read. The story has definitely progressed in the direction that I was expecting it to progress. Um, Ragnar's story is becoming more complicated by the minute and I do have a feeling that it's about to get even more complicated. Um, with regards to Edgar's story, um, that has gone a little bit quiet at the moment but he has had this moment of big realization within himself. So we see character development and growth emotionally, mentally. But obviously it is something that he cannot necessarily act on at this stage in time in the book. Aldred's story is probably one of the most complicated um, within the plot. Um, Aldred obviously has, unfortunately for himself, created a lot of enemies along the way and the issue is that he didn't create that many enemies at the beginning but the enemies that he sort of made um, were particularly powerful which includes Winston the abbot and that means that the power that the abbot has on villagers and that he has on other monks and that he has on members of the clergy is obviously a lot and that is making his life much much more uh, difficult. However, there was this big point in the story and we see how Drang's Ferry starts becoming Knightsbridge that we will see in the Pillars of the Earth. And as I said, I did have a feeling that Edgar was going to be instrumental in this sort of shift from Drang's Ferry to what will become Knightsbridge. And I'm really glad because we see how his contribution means that a little sort of cluster of houses is slowly expanding to become village and that's really exciting to see. I do wonder how far in the story we're going to go in terms of where we're going to leave Drenks Ferry and are we going to see Drenks Ferry turn into Knight's Bridge or are we going to see just Drenks Ferry just reaching the very ultimate potential of Drenks Ferry and then Knight's Bridge is obviously the next step that we will not see is in those pages missing between the evening and the morning and the pillars of the earth but I'm really curious to see how the story of Drang's Fairy actually evolves because yes, you know that it's the same place because there is Leper Island, because there is a church, uh, because there is the ale house and all that, but you don't know what part of the place is what and how it evolves and instead we're starting to see the shift also in a way, um, the sort of geography of the, of the village is being built, how Edgar decides to uh, create his own house, build his own house right in front of well, where the, the new church will be. So that's um, that's very exciting and I I don't know, it's making me want to reread Pillars of the Earth so much because I remember loving that book. I definitely see a lot of parallels in terms of how characters are created and portrayed but there is that whole element of um, sort of like impossible romance that we have in Pillars of the Earth that I think makes it a little bit more spicy. And obviously I do have this memory of Pillars of the Earth or when I was a teenage girl, so um, I might be completely wrong and I might dislike it, not dislike it, but not like it as much at the moment. But for now, I think Pillars of the Earth has a special place in my heart. This one is a really, really good book though. So, oh my God, my hair. <laughs> this one's a really good book. Um, what I'm gonna do now is Probably read some more and in about half an hour I'm going to wake up Andrew so we can crack on with our day. Not that there is much to do 
yesterday was a very quiet Saturday. The most exciting part of our day was that a new coffee shop, I think I showed it um, a few days ago, it was the official opening of that coffee shop that I showed you in a few clips back and they were just giving everyone free coffee. I will catch you a little bit later. In the meantime, I'll try wake up a little bit, take a shower. <laughs> to make coffee but I thought I since I just read a chapter and it's quite of an important chapter in terms of what happens um, I thought I'd chat to you let's see can you balance on my potatoes you can um, I thought I'd chat to you about what's happening at Drinks Ferry and how badly I feel for both Aldred and Edgar so a big major plot twist has happened in terms of not the story itself, not, not the characters itself, but more in terms of the story. So there has been a big setback for the both of them and for the first time, well for the first time since the death of Shunji, we see Edgar showing his feelings and crying and that is a very clear sign of desperation I think for this character and Aldred as well, like he realises I think how enemies along the way can have a long-term impact as well. Part of me really doesn't want to finish the book because I really like being lost in Ken Follett's words um, but I do really want to know where the story ends and also whether we see what link there is between the Knightsbridge, the modern Knightsbridge we know at the beginning of Palos of the Earth and Drang's Ferry at this stage so I'm really curious to know that but coffee and shower first and then the rest. Same spot, different time. I'm entering the very final part of the book. As I predicted, a few things have happened. Ragnar's storyline evolves quite a lot since the beginning of the book. She goes from being in a fairly privileged position and fairly happy with her condition to being um, basically on the very opposite side of where she started in the book. She started in a really comfortable a privileged position and she is now currently, as we are about to enter the final part of the book, um, in almost a captive position. Again, without giving too much away, don't take captive as in prisoner kind of position, but she, she is not in a great place mentally and also society-wise. Uh, when it comes to Aldred, he's probably the one who has so far improved this condition the most and that's because of his uh, ability to understand situations and to, yes, he, he had quite a lot of bad luck making the wrong enemies uh, at the beginning of the book, but at the same time uh, being smart and understanding how to navigate certain societal situations, especially with members outside of the clergy, so within the royal ranks, uh, that definitely helped him um, prosper the sort of situation within Drang's Ferry. That was the final sentence in the, in the third part of the book. Nowadays they call it King's Bridge. It's nice to see how everything started. That being said, I am now going to take a little bit of break from reading and I think I'm going to finish this tonight, whether I decide to take a bath or whether I just decide to keep reading on the sofa. But for now, I think I need a little bit of a break. I might take Poppy on a walk and then I'll update you once I finish a book or once I have any more um, yeah, re reading updates that I feel like I need to share. But for now, uh, that's where I'm at with the evening and the morning. Absolutely love this book, but I do have to say Pillars of the Earth still has a special place in my heart and I do think um, this uses the... I mean, it's a typical Ken Follett sort of trope and I think it's very specific to him, especially when it comes to the Pillars of the Earth series of books, which is the 
you know, the unlikely lovers uh, that slowly realize the kind of connection that is between them and then they, they, they sort of make the decision, the conscious effort to be together but then a member of, a member external to this relationship, usually a member of the clergy, finds a way to obstruct the relationship and this is precisely what we're seeing here. Again, without giving too much away, you can easily understand who the characters involved in this impossible romance are and I do want to hope that by the end of the book this will have resolved in the usual um, Ken Follett way when it comes to his medieval set books. I think it will because we all need a little bit of emotional relief and I'm sort of looking forward to that but at the same time it is it was a little bit predictable I could tell that this was gonna happen since I don't know I've bookmarked a few pages here and there um, where I could see I don't know if you can see where you could see um, that there were hints about this um, and I wanted to to be mindful about the fact that this happens quite a lot in Ken Follett's books. Um, again, not in all of his books, obviously, because of the variety of genres that he, he writes and the variety of stories that he writes, but especially I've noticed with Pillars of the Earth, War Would That End and A Column of Fire, um, those tropes were quite... Um, they were present in every single book, so I, I can see how this is happening again and I can see where the story is going. I don't know exactly how it will pan out, but I can see that this is definitely happening. But yeah, for now, this is it. This is my update. That's my dog scratching herself and making noise, and I'll catch you later. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Monday. I have now finished reading The Evening and the Morning by Ken Follett, which is part of the Pillars of the Earth series. I think right now there are currently four books, uh, Pillars of the Earth, Word Without End, Column of Fire, and the Evening and the Morning, which is a prequel to the entire Kingsbridge series. Um, I've been vlogging throughout my reading experience, so this vlog has been going on for quite some time. And as you know, um, the key purpose of reading this book was obviously, first of all, because I love Ken Follett's books and I was looking forward to this. And second of all, to get out of a reading slump. I can definitely say, even though this is a brick of a book, because it's nearly, it's over 800, nearly 900 pages, I think. Um, it definitely worked. It definitely helped in um, achieving the goal of getting me out of a reading slump and making me love reading again. Not that I didn't, but I was feeling quite tired and burned out from the past few months. So that's definitely achieved this goal. Second of all, obviously, as a big fan of the Pillars of the Earth book series, I was really interested in seeing um, how King Kingsbridge came to be. And this was an interesting book to read because it gave access to different parts of society at that time. This is a classic for Ken Follett, regardless of what book he writes, especially when it comes to his series, whether that's the Century Trilogy or the um, Kingsbridge series. Um, he always gives a little bit of an insight to the different societal classes that are living in a specific place at that time. As I mentioned at the very beginning of this vlog, the key characters that we tend to follow throughout the story are three. We have Ragnar, which is this um, Norman noblewoman, so she's French, she's foreigner, but she has a high societal status and she is married off to, or she receives a marriage proposal that she accepts, so she's not married off as in an arranged marriage and all that, uh, but she decides to marry a man she falls in love with, uh, who is an English nobleman. So she lives that sort of life. But um, we discover pretty early on that her experience um, is not going to be as easy as she thought when she decided that she was going to marry Wilf. The second character that we follow, which I think is very crucial in the development of Drengsbury into what is going to be Kingsbridge, um, which is Edgar. Edgar is from Combe and he's a boat maker. His family suffers quite a lot, the loss of the father figure during the, the Viking assault on Combe and they relocate to Drengsbury where they're given this um, piece of land with a little farm and they sort of have to 
change their focus from boat building to farming and then in Edgar's case he sort of becomes um, a builder and buildings builder um, and creates um, like he, he understands the importance of using stone rather than wood to create specific buildings and also he's a very smart and resourceful man that we see from very early on in the book and how he tries to problem solve different issues that he comes across throughout his story. The other character that we see is Aldred, he's a monk and from the very beginning of the book we encounter him and understand that he's very passionate about his um, religious calling and is really passionate about books and learning and enlightening people but not enlightening people in the light of religion but in enlightening people in the sense of trying to give uh, knowledge to people also from other classes and that means that later on in the story we'll see he prefers putting an importance on the um, teaching of the English language over the teaching of the Latin language for instance um, to lower classes so to enable them so to enable them to um, understand religious texts. Um, overall it was a really pleasant reading experience it was really nice to go back to Kingsbridge it was really nice to see places that obviously we see later on in the centuries with the rest of the, tri the, the series and it was nice to see how some things came to be like the bridge, like the cathedral, and it, it was a very pleasant experience. I do have to say, Kim Follett um, never disappoints in terms of stories. They're very uh, pleasant to read, they're really, I don't want to say easy to read because they, they're not necessarily easy to read, but they are um, comforting reads. It's nice to get a book that is this big and be able to finish it in a few days. And in my case, I took it really slow. Usually I would finish this in about a week, but I didn't worry about that at all. I just wanted to enjoy it and dip in and out of it as I wanted to. Um, the other thing that came follow tends to do is to uh, to give. He, he tends to use some tropes, and I mentioned this in yesterday's clips. So there are some tropes, especially when it comes to romance within his books, that you know where that story is going to go and in this case there is some sort of underlying romance going on from let's say half of the book and I could see from the very beginning like from those very few hints that come even before the, the first half of the book uh, that this this is how the story was going to pan out and for the story to pan out in that way I knew that a certain character had to be removed from the storyline and that is precisely what happened at some point. Uh, there is also the trope of common man, common woman versus church, corrupt church to be precise. And indeed that was also used here, there is a lot of corruption within the clergy. Uh, not that it's something inaccurate or not true, but again, even before I dipped into this book, I could see, like, I knew that there was going to be a corrupt figure within the church sphere and that is precisely what happened. So, Overall, a good book and I would recommend it. Um, I do believe a lot of research has gone into this. I did read the acknowledgements and I do think um, there is a mention to the fact that he did alter some events and did not respect 100% historical accuracy. But we need to remember that this is historical fiction. This is not meant to be an accurate record of what happened. Uh, you can definitely see that he's put a lot of time and effort into researching this book and that is admirable and also understanding that as a writer you do need to take a little bit of creative freedom in order to make the storyline a little bit more appealing to the reader and I do appreciate the honesty in saying that in the acknowledgement section as well. As somebody who's read all the other books in the series I would say this is not the strongest one. Uh, for me Pillars of the Earth followed by Word Without End, end are still the strongest books. Pillars of the Earth will always have a special place in my heart just because it's the first one I read. I think that was the very first Campbell book I ever read in my life. I would definitely say if you like historical fiction, if you're reading for, if you're looking for something that talks about the Dark Ages and the Middle Ages, then I would definitely say pick up The Evening and the Morning by Ken Follett. I do have, I pre-ordered this Waterstones edition before it came out and actually I realised that at the very end what makes it a Waterstones special edition is that there is a what, four page Q&A with Ken Follett which is quite interesting and it also answers my questions whether 
Um, the characters that we encounter in this book are um, in this book are the ancestors to the ones that we encounter in Pillars of the Earth? The answer to that is yes, if you were wondering, but we do not know the precise connection between them because obviously nearly a century goes past. Uh, so my initial thought that maybe Edgar and Tom were related, it is probably true, but we don't know the exact connection. And as I said, at first I hadn't realised how many years had passed between the two things, but obviously Edgar is not Tom's father and is not his grandfather because way too many years <laughs> are in between those two and back in the day people didn't live a hundred years. Um, but yeah, this is my vlog and mini review of The Evening and the Morning by Ken Follett, historical fiction novel set between 900, 997 up until 1007. So we followed its characters for a decade and we do get attached to them and I would say pick it up if this is what you're looking for. Also don't be afraid by the fact that this is a chunky book, it is a chunky book but you read it really easily. So thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've read this book, do let me know. If you're planning on reading this book, let me know. If you've read any of the other Camp Follett books, chances are I've probably read it too, so I would love to chat about that in the comment section and I will catch you in the next vlog. Thank you very much. Goodbye.